The story goes as follows. Deep in the forest of Ember, and living deep in that forest, were a group of people that were going to go down in history as the Pendle Witches. Two of them are Demdike and Chattox, commonly known as Anne Whittle and indeed um, Elizabeth Southern were over 85 years old. In those days, life expectancy, if you were lucky, would be 35. These two women had somehow defied the laws of nature. Now, our story starts from a place called Malkin Tower. Living there was Elizabeth Southern, commonly known as Denver, with her daughter, Elizabeth Device, and her three children, James, Jeanette, and Alison Device. On the 18th of March, 1612, Alison had a walk she walked along the length of Pendle Hill, through the forest glades, and there she came across a Halifax peddler called John Law. And he would go from village to village, selling his wares. He was a great source of information, like a walking newspaper. He met young Alison Device beneath the shadow of Pendle Hill on the Combe to Chawton Road. Alison begged him, <coughs> Oh, please, sir, please, sir, just a few pins, sir, to pin my clothing together. Get away with you. I'm not taking any pack up for you, lads. You've got no money. According to John Law, the Halifax peddler, this huge black dog came out of the forest of Pendle with snarling white teeth and glowing red eyes. And the dog walked up to Alison, sat down next to her, turned to look at Alison, and the dog said, Alison, I can lame him for you. Let him, let him, she screamed. Law felt this terrible pain on his left arm and left leg and collapsed in agony. He lay there for a good five hours, the kind of the cone could see him. They got a stretch team together and they carried him into an old alehouse called the Greyhound Inn. And as Law's voice returned, he shouted, I've been cursed! There's a witch in the forest, a young lass with a dog, I swear to you. The dog talks, she's in league with devil. Send letters back to my family, tell him what's happened to me. John Abrington wrote letters back to Halifax, and John Law's eldest son, Abraham Law, received the first letter. He, my father's in trouble, better go and collect him. He set her from Halifax, arrived in the Lancashire town of Combe, and walked into the Greyhound Inn and saw his father in a twisted and contorted state. Father, you look terrible, man. What's happened to you? Abraham, I've been cursed. There's a witch in the forest, the young lass from the dock. I swear to you, I heard the dog talk. She didn't leave with devil. What you like to go and find her? Bring her here. Reverse the curse, lad. I can't do my left arm, your left leg, and pain, lad. Abraham set off and walked deep into the forest of hammered on the door, the door opened and there was James Device, Alison's brother. Uh, can I help you, sir? I want to see Alison Device. My father wants to see her. Uh, she's near, sir. Alison came to the door. Right, lass, you're coming with me. She protested her innocence, but was dragged from the forest of Pendle, down into Cone and into the Greyhound Inn, where she made contact with John Law, who looked up from his sick bed and shouted, It's you! It's you! You what witch! You cursed me last, didn't you? That dog you had! I heard it talk, you're a league with devil, I it talk, lass. Alison, on bended knees, with tears streaming down her cheek, begged and begged forgiveness. She had no idea. She just admitted to a state capital offence of witchcraft. She had no idea, but that's what she'd done. Strange enough, John Law, the Halifax peddler, was about to forgive her, but not his son Abraham. Only uh, we'll have you for this. I'm going to go and get magistrate. The local magistrate was called Roger Noel, and he was going to play a very, very important role in the prosecution. First of all, he came from Reed Hall Burnley, a lovely building. He was in charge of the whole of the Forest of Pendle region. He was also aware of King James's paranoia towards witchcraft, and he also had his own version of demonology. Uh, which the king encouraged every magistrate to read. He also knew if he could incriminate young Alison Device, he was going to curry favour with, with none other than the King of England, King James personally. So Alison was arrested, brought to Reed Hall, where she burst into tears for the second time inside 24 hours and admitted to witchcraft. But she gave Noel a lot more information. Big girl of the damn time. She's a witch. Saw's Bessie Chaddix and her daughter and Redford. We have these dogs, sir. They are familiars. Familiars, said Roger. Yes, sir. Tib, Ball, Fancy, Dandy. These dogs gave us special powers, sir. They came to all fours at different times of our lives. 
They said, look, we can give you special powers. We just need to take those souls and suckle from your flesh. We have marks on our bodies, sir, where they'd suckle off us, sir. Noah was not scared. He was actually delighted. He knew he was going to curry favor the king of England. So therefore, he gave orders to the sheriff of the forest to arrest Demdike, Chattox, and Redfern. They were brought to Reed Hall, where they met young Alison. And this huge argument erupted. The four of them blamed each other. The whole blame went around the table, this way, then that way. And in doing so, no one was delighted. The four of them admitted to witchcraft, but also to grave robbery from New Church in Pendle, to taking hair and teeth from corpses, and making what they said were clay pictures of human beings. Selecting a victim, crumbling the clay picture over fire, and people were dying, not necessarily straight away, but in some cases, many years later. But the four of them admitted to witchcraft. The four of them were sent over the beautiful trough of Boland into the city of Lancaster and into a horrible, deep underground dungeon called the Well Tower, which is situated at Lancaster City Castle. It's still there to this very day. There, in total darkness, they had chained the floor in the clothes they'd been arrested in, lying in their own waste for weeks after weeks. You can imagine it would have been a horrible position to be in. In the meantime, deep in the forest of Pendle, at Malkin Tower, this little stone cottage, Alison's mother, Elizabeth Devise, is very concerned about her daughter, but even more concerned about her mother, Elizabeth Southern, commonly known as Demdark. And she organises, according to Thomas Potts' book, what's called the Good Friday Meeting at Malkin Tower. The Great Gathering of the Witches, as it was called in the book. Uh, there, uh, Alison's brother James slaughtered the sheep, they dined on fresh mutton. They got a large cooking vessel called the cauldron, apparently. They lit a fire beneath the cauldron, and the black super liquid inside began to bubble and steam. And into that black bubbling liquid went crushed, powdered human teeth, the odd clay pitcher, the odd human scalp. The whole idea was apparently to get a potion together to blow the gates of Lancaster City Castle open and rescue their loved ones. However, nothing happened. What did happen? is word of this meeting on Good Friday in the Forest of Pendle at Malkintyre reached the ears of Roger Nolan and he simply thought, I want every person arrested immediately. The ones that were successfully arrested were Jeanette Preston of Gisborne, West Yorkshire, Catherine Hewitt, Alice Gray of the town of Cone, Elizabeth Device, James Device and young Jeanette Device of Malkintyre, John and Jane Bullcock, a mother and son, farmers from Blackhead, and this incredibly brave lady called Alice Nutter of Ruffley. So Jeanette Preston of, of Gisborne, West Yorkshire, was the very, very first of the Pendle Witches to be executed in York, not Lancaster, but the city of York. The trials began on the 17th of August, 1612, Lancaster City Castle. Demdike defied the courts at the very, very end. She died before the trials began. According to Thomas Potts' book, she admitted to witchcraft and admitted to making these clay effigies and having a dog called uh, Tim that came to her and gave her special powers. The first person brought into the cells was Bessie Chattox in a terrible, terrible state of health. She was called Chattox because her teeth chattered with fear. Uh, she was described in the book as being a skeleton in rags and she must have been a very, very pitiful sight seeing daylight for the first time in four months. She was found guilty of the murder of five local people by witchcraft some dating back 18 years before her arrest. She made a plea of guilty and was found guilty of witchcraft. Her daughter Anne Redford was then brought in. She was found guilty of witchcraft. James Devise was brought in and James actually self-incriminated himself. He even helped to show the forest apparently dig up a clay picture in Malkin Tower and admitted to witchcraft. Young Alison Devise was convinced that she had indeed lamed John Law the Halifax peddler. John Law was brought into court and the court said to John Law, to Alice, could you reverse the curse? Only my grandmother can do that, I so. And she admitted to witchcraft. Along with uh, Catherine uh, Hewitt of uh, Cone, she admitted to the murder of Anne Felt of Cone by witchcraft. However, this is where the story takes a very, very sinister twist. In court that day was John and Jane Bullcock, a mother and son from Blackpool, farmers, and this incredibly brave lady called Alice Nutter. The three of them, uh, were hard-working people, actually. In the case of John and Jane, they had their own farm. 
and they'd been complaining about land disputes. They'd seen Roger Mill about land shrinking, and he said, well, I'll look into it, and never did. Alice Nutter came from Rough Lee. She was a very, very wealthy lady with a husband, and she too had complained about land disputes, and he'd just swept it under the table. However, Alice uh, made the very, very brave decision of going to Lancaster City Council. Now, in 1612, women were not allowed to possess a brain. It was believed by some men that women didn't even have a brain. And when it came to male chauvinism, women suffered terribly in this country. They had no rights whatsoever. Alice had asked her husband to look into the land disputes at Lancaster, but he was too scared to go, so she went by herself. And she walked into a court session for the words of, it's a woman, a woman, get her out. It's a woman, a woman, get her out. She grabbed all the furniture. Uh, but she wouldn't let go. The judge said, well, let her have her say. And in one day, she won all her land disputes, but in doing so, she really annoyed one man in the court that day, who Roger Noel had thought, this woman has gone over my head. So is John and Jane Balcock. I need to get rid of them. How can I? I know I can kill two birds with one stone. He had his trump card up his sleeve. He picked young uh, Jeanette Devise up and put her on top of the table. The jury could see her. And she shouted to the jury, Me grandmother's a witch, me mother's a witch, so is my brother, so is my sister. Her mother shouted, Stop it, Jimmy. You don't know what you're saying. Stop it. Uh, have my mother room for the court. She's upset. Her. And uh, Roger Nose said, These three people here, John and Jane Bullcock, Alice Nutter, were there at the Good Friday meeting at your home, Malkin Tower, in the forest of Hendel on Good Friday. They were, sir. Look, a shock came across their faces as they realised they were being incriminated for witchcraft. And she made a plea of not guilty, so I don't know these people. She's a modern term. John and Jane and Alice Nutter, they went to their desk completely innocent of the crimes against them. And they were the only people that made pleas of not guilty. This story is so intriguing. The only, the only window we have is Thomas Fox's book. But when you do read that book, it seems very, very one-sided. It seems very one-sided. Were the uh, accusations fabricated? These people were certainly peasants. They wouldn't know what day it was. They wouldn't be able to read or write. And they may have agreed to agreeing to being witches to appease Roger Noel. On the instant, they'd be released. That is sheer speculation. We'll never know. But for me, the real hero is Alice Nutter. And she, for me, is a, a, a marvellous heroine. I put in the same league as Edith Cabal, Emmeline Pankhurst, Grace Darling, because she lost her life for one reason and one reason only. She was a woman who had a brain and she used it. Unfortunately, it was her death sentence. And there we have the Pendle Witch Storm.